Well, hello everybody and welcome to Holiday Science here at Orize. Today we have, we have Joseph and we have Levi and we have Jada. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do today is called Candy Cane Science Experiment. And we have, as you can see on the table, we have all our materials laid out. Um, it's a lot easier if you go ahead and just lay out your materials for your students. And today, the three students, because we do have such a small group, they're gonna be able to um, do everything themselves. Typically within a classroom, if you do have a larger classroom, we can divide them into groups of four. And within the lesson plan that I have that you can see over to the side in the PowerPoint, it does list, um, you can divide your, your students into teams of four and each one, two, three, and four has a different duty for the experiment. And it kind of helps to accelerate um, time-wise for how much time you have for your science experiment within your classroom. So today we're gonna go over um, the, some of the materials that we have. We have smaller cups um, that we're gonna put our solutions in. I went ahead and label the cups so the students are familiar on where they go. I also made them in exactly the same order for all of the students as well. So we've um, made some warm water. It's very easy. You can um, get some warm water out of a microwave if you have that available or room temperature water if, you're, if you do not have access to a microwave. That's completely fine. Um, everything else is also room temperature as well. We have soda. We have um, vegetable oil, we have vinegar, and we also have club soda. So those are gonna be our five solutions that we are going to experiment with today with our candy canes. One thing that I do wanna point out to you of how important it is for the candy canes, if you can notice how they're multicolored, you can find your typical red and white candy canes or you can find the multicolored. And I will say for this experiment and for the ooh and awe of your students that the multicolored candy canes are gonna be so much better. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Are you guys ready? Sure. Awesome. So what you're going to do is you're going to find your cups and you're going to carefully pick one up. So for uh, the first one I picked up was oil. I'm going to grab the oil or whichever one you pick up. You, you don't have to get them all at the same time. And you're just going to pour a little bit into your cup. Okay, maybe up here, because you can see with three people, that's as much oil as we have for today, so I want you to notice that. In teachers, um, what you're gonna do is one of the assignments or one of the um, students in the group, you're actually gonna have your materials over to the side, and for person, let's say, you say person number one in the group, all of the number ones are gonna go over to the table, and they're gonna collect the materials that they need. Um, and typically, depending on your class, you know your class well, if you wanna go ahead and have all of those cups prepared in advance, and then team member number one goes over and grabs those cups, that's perfectly fine. Or if you have a smaller group, um, you can have them do this as well on their own, okay? So you can go ahead, I'm gonna give you a few minutes. Again, they're labeled on your cup, so you can just grab a cup one at a time, and I can walk around and make sure if you, if you have any help, if you need any help, you just let me know. All right, go for it. So as you can see, for sake of time, it, does gonna, it is gonna take a little bit longer if you do not already have these materials set up for a certain team member to come and grab them and carefully bring them over to the table as well. And you should constantly remind your students before you even start, during the experiment, um, always remind them it's not safe to um, ingest any of the materials, even though they would probably tell you, you know what, I, I drink Coca-Cola, I drink it at dinner, I have it at lunch. But this is an experiment, so they, you need to remind them, you don't know what's been in that cup. Maybe Coca-Cola wasn't in that cup before. Um, it could have been vinegar. Maybe you could possibly be allergic to it. So always be weary of, of what could have been in those cups on the scientific tables. So that's really, really important to constantly remind them um, of the safety within an experiment. All right, so which one do you want next? Soda water or vinegar? So think about the solutions that you have in front of you, the materials that you have and the candy canes. You're going to be putting one candy cane inside each cup, 
okay? And we're gonna watch it over a certain amount of time. So with just knowing that aspect of the experiment, what do you think your question's going to be? And could you possibly all three have a different question? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Does anybody want to volunteer what they think their question's going to be? Sure, absolutely. Joseph, what do you think? How long does it take for a candy cane to dissolve in a one of the solutions? That's perfect. Go ahead and write that down. That is an excellent question. You all can follow along with his question as well. This would work well if you have... Um, smaller groups. So let's say in the classroom you just have three students within a group because you have a smaller classroom. This again, the recorder would also be then maybe the number two person that you've given a number to in that after they've had a, um, a little bit of time to discuss what is the question? What are we experimenting? What are we finding out today? The recorder would write down on the one worksheet, which also cuts down on paper as well. Our question today is, um, how about this Levi? What, um, how many candy canes do you need? How many cups do you have? Five. Awesome, you have five. So how many candy canes does that mean that you need? Five. That's exactly right. So Levi, if you'll do me a favor, you can go ahead and put your pencil down and I need you to grab five different candy canes. Don't put any, just put them in your hand. Just grab five different candy canes. Any five that you want. Make sure that you do get one that is red and, and uh, white striped. Great job. All right, Joseph, why don't you go ahead and pick out five of yours? Remember, don't place them in anything yet. So again, this is another opportunity where you can already have the candy canes on your table and in a cup where the number one um, team member came over and grabbed the materials and placed them on the table. Typically, again, if you have um, in groups and not a small amount of children, you can um, just have five per group. And again, that cuts down on cost as well. All right, Jada, go ahead and grab five and place them to the side or hold them in your hand, either one. And make sure you do get at least a red and white striped one. Perfect. It's okay if you have three of the same. Okay. Now, again, if you have three of the same color, so you're going to have five total candy canes, you can also do this with four different solutions. Again, anyway, if you need to cut down on cost, just having four solutions. If you don't feel comfortable with your classmates or your students having access to vinegar or oil, again, you can even cut it down to three different solutions if you want to. So as many solutions as you have is as many candy canes as your, um, your experiment group needs, okay? All right, so now that you have your five candy canes, so let's think about this. Um, what I said earlier, you each have this worksheet, correct? The Dissolving Candy Cane Science Experiment. And you will see this attached as well. You'll have access to this to print off. Um, you can do one per group, or you can do each, each or you can print off one per student in your group. All right, with this, you have liquids one, two, three, four, and five on this sheet, okay? As you can see, it's really important if you do allow all your students to have the same solutions in front of them, make sure they do have it in the same order. That could help clear up any confusion when they're having conversations during the experimental time. Okay, so we're gonna start with oil is gonna be number one, cola is gonna be number two, and three. So one, two, three, remember like a clock, four and five, all right? So on your sheet, we're going to have that. So liquid one is oil, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and I'll help you remember that if you forget as well. It's not a problem, all right? So what I want you to do is, and also another thing about your candy canes, make sure that they are, the plastic has been removed from the candy canes. That will expedite um, the experiment as well of gathering the materials because candy canes can be a fragile and the hook part can fall off and that's really important in this experiment because you want them to hook it over the cup so they can touch just the candy cane and not the solution. They're not actually dipping their fingers into the solution. Okay, all right, so what we're gonna do is we have our five candy canes. Does it matter what color candy cane goes in what solution? No, that's the joy of experimenting, right? You kinda want everybody to do something a little bit different but your control, do you know what a control is in an experiment? It's something that remains the same throughout for everybody. So your control, what's one thing that remains the same for everybody in this experiment? We have all one red and white. 
That's a good answer, but she could have. I think she has three blue ones, so that's not a control. What is one thing that everybody has the same of? Solutions. Yes, very good. So your solutions are the control. Those are going to stay the same. But what's different and makes this so neat is all your students are going to have different color candy canes. Now, if you can only find the red and white candy canes in the store, that's perfectly fine as well. That's also going to be a control. Okay. So if you would, it doesn't matter, remember how we said it doesn't matter what candy cane goes in what, if you'll just go ahead and grab your five candy canes and you can just put them in whatever solution that you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and start the clock. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna have them place them in the solution. They're gonna draw at that time what the candy cane looks like, the part that's inside the solution. They're gonna make note of what the solution looks like. And then we're gonna uh, experiment and let five minutes go by. And then at five minutes, we're gonna check back in with you. So during this part at the beginning, you want your students to draw what the candy cane looks like, the part that's inside of the, of the solution. If you do not have access to color pencils, that's perfectly fine. Using a pencil or even a pen is okay, but typically you need to start teaching them that a pencil needs to be used in all experiments because guess what? Mistakes are gonna happen, they're gonna possibly mess up their drawing, and you don't want a bunch of scribbles on your, um, on your page. So a pencil is always the best option. So another way you could do this as well is you could already have candy canes already pre-drawn on your worksheet. You can differentiate your worksheet as well um, for all the um, levels and ability within your classroom. So maybe you're a kindergarten teacher or you're a third grade teacher or a fifth or sixth, et cetera. You know how to differentiate within your classroom. And then after you've drawn them, Levi, if you want to color them in, that's perfectly fine if you want to do that. So only a minute and 10 seconds has gone by. What is happening, Levi? What is happening to your soda water? Which one is soda water? Can you point to it? What's happening? It's turning blue. It's turning blue. That's a great observation. So why do you think, remember how we were talking about questions earlier? Why do you think that that's happening? Because the candy cane is blue. Because the candy cane is blue. Levi, that is an excellent answer. We're going to continue to let time go by and we'll check back in a little bit. Okay, so five minutes has passed and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our solutions. We're going to see did they change colors and I'm going to have the, the uh, students within the group kind of have an open discussion of, oh wow, check this out. And I'm going to let them walk around a little bit and look at each other's. Remember, we talked about the control and then some variables earlier and the control was the solution. They all have the same solution in the exact same order, but the variable uh, within this experiment are the different types of candy cane coloring. So we're going to go around and I'm going to give them a couple minutes to take a look at everyone's different colors of solutions. So during this time, um, typically if you just have enough materials for three or four people per group, they would just have an open discussion and talk about the different coloring that they see within their cups. Um, and then you would probe them to ask questions to each other um, and, and answer questions such as, why do you think this is happening? Do you think it has anything to do with the solution or do you think it has everything to do with the coloring of the candy cane? Do you think it has to do with the size of the candy cane? So you can have all of these questions beforehand. You can either have them already printed out on a worksheet, you can have them up on an overhead where they can reflect to, um, or you can just, again, you're differentiating within your groups and your class levels. Um, you can just have them talk to each other as well. All right, so make sure if you have a timer within your group whose responsibility is to watch the time, that they're always being careful with the time. Again, as a teacher, you can have a timer to the, to the side. You can have one up digitally on a PowerPoint um, so they can the whole class can see it at the same time and they can see the time elapsed go by and you can stop that timer. You can have a timer with noise. Again, it depends on your classroom level and what you think they need um, to help move along the experiment. We are now at the 10 minute mark and this is where you want your students to check out what their candy canes look like. It is okay for them to touch the top of the candy cane and pull it out of the solution. 
And when they do that, they're going to see what happened possibly to the candy cane. And what they see, what they observe, is what they need to write down on their worksheet that they have that was supplied to them at the very beginning of the class. So another thing that you can do at the very beginning of class, um, you can have them when you are reflecting on your hypothesis or your question, you can have them guess as a team or by themselves which solution is going to dissolve the candy cane the fastest. You can create, um, you can turn that into a math problem as well. You can end up graphing it in beforehand and afterwards. And so you can have a bar graph at the beginning of the rankings and at the very end of class. And you can see um, the relationship between the beginning and the end. And maybe you can even turn it into a competition of which team had um, the correct answer. If you have a tie, then maybe if they're in a high school level, you can have them, whoever can solve the chemical equation the fastest. If they're at an elementary school level, maybe you can have them, whoever can draw and um, color in a candy cane the fastest. You, you know your classroom the best, so you can do it that way. All right, are we good? Almost. And throughout the experiment, as the teacher, you should be walking around the classroom constantly monitoring your students. Again, you don't want any of these materials to spill on your table. If they do spill on the table, it's okay. Um, they're easy to clean. Okay, so we are officially at the 15 minute mark within our experiment. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab each candy cane and you're gonna lay it next to the cup. You're gonna lay it next to its solution. Make sure if you need to move your cups, that's okay to give everybody a little bit of room. And But make sure your candy canes are all placed on top of the paper towel. All right. All right, after they've taken all their candy canes out of their solutions, you have them lay each candy cane next to the solution. That gives you an all in, a holistic perspective of what each candy cane looks like and what each solution did to the candy cane. So what was the name of this experiment today? Do you remember? Candy cane dissolving the experiment. Right, good job. So dissolving candy cane, right? So dissolving candy cane was the name of our experiment today, and we are finally at the conclusion. So, what is the conclusion of this, Jada? What solution dissolved the candy cane the most? Um, water. Water. Did everyone else get the same thing? Did water seem to dissolve your candy cane the most? Now, at the beginning, is that what you hypothesized? Is that what you had guessed? That water out of all of those would be the, the, the fastest way to, to dissolve a candy cane? I thought it would be one of the sodas. You thought it would be one of the sodas? What did you think? The vinegar. Um, Levi, what'd you think? What solution did you think was gonna be the fastest? The Coke. Well, the first time I ever did this as well, I also thought that it would be the Coke as well. But as you can see, it's water. And why, now let's go a little bit deeper. Why do you think water dissolves it the fastest? What's the point of a candy cane? To eat it. To eat it, right? And how is it dissolved? By your... Your mouth, what's inside your mouth? Your, that too, but your saliva, right? And if you drink water with it, it's gonna dissolve a little bit faster, okay? All right, so which solution, Levi, dissolved your candy cane the least? Oil. The oil. Did you have the same thing? Mm -hmm. You have the same thing as well. Awesome. So this is a point, too, where you're going to go around and you're going to get everybody's ranking and if their hypothesis and guesses from the very beginning of the experiment were correct. Thank you for joining us today on this experiment called in Dissolving Candy Canes. As you can see, all of these materials you can easily find within your kitchen. The entire experiment won't cost you anywhere. Probably a, The entire experiment will probably cost about $5 if you don't have these materials already located in your kitchen. And another good thing about this over the holidays is an older sibling can teach a younger sibling. We have Jada who's in sixth grade, Levi who is in first grade, and we have Joseph who is also in the sixth grade today. So they easily could go back and teach a younger sibling or an older sibling or even their parents and family when they come in town for the holidays.